Welcome runners to the Great American 5000 Recap Show presented by Buddy. I'm your host, Casey Baum, with leaderboard updates for Friday, June 26th. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our new sponsor, Kroger, for supporting the Great American 5000 and this recap show. Thanks so much for supporting such a great event. Now, on to the leaderboard updates for Friday afternoon. In the Ultra Open 12-person category, it's still Ultra Running in Nairobi with 1,766 miles. In the Ultra Co-Ed 12-person category, it's still the Fibonacci Sequence team with 2,015 miles. There's a great race going on in the Ultra Female 12-person category. The New York Athletic Club still leads with the Studs and Soul Sisters right on their heels. The Ultra Female 24-person category is still led by MRTT Vienna, no holding us back with 1,127 miles. The co-ed 24-person category is still led by Just Us Runners with 1,663 miles. And still leading the Open 24 category and the overall leader in the race is the Machingo Misha Track Club with 2,464 miles. Keep it up, runners. You're all doing awesome. Today, I'm joined by Pete Kostelnik. He is the world record holder in actually running from San Francisco to New York. He did it in 42 days, 6 hours, and 30 minutes, beating the previous world record by 4 days. What an amazing athlete and a great guy to talk to. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Thanks so much, uh, Pete, for for joining us today on the uh, Great American 5000 uh, recap show. Um, for those who, who may not um, know you, do you mind uh, introducing yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me, Casey. Um, yeah, I'm an ultra runner. Uh, I've done most uh, pertinent to the Great American 5000 is um, I've run across the country a couple times. Uh, so <laughs> I ran across the U.S. in uh, 2016. And I'm, I took almost the exact same route uh, we're taking right now. So that was okay. cool for me to, to see like almost every like inch of my journey from San Francisco to New York um, is the same as what we're doing. And then I also ran um, in 2018. So I didn't get enough of it in 2016. I ran self-supported. So I pushed, pushed all my gear in a stroller from uh, Kenai, Alaska to Key West, Florida key to key and that was a little bit longer but uh, a little bit slower so yeah I mean I, I just I love the concept of uh, running across America so this is like really cool uh, to be a part awesome. yeah so you're currently doing this event virtually but um, so does the world record you hold the world record for fastest time for the uh, San Francisco to New York coast to coast yeah. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, it was a record, uh, that actually had stood, um, for 36 years. Um, so Oof. I think, uh, it was 1980 when, uh, Frank Janino, uh, broke that record and I attempted in 2016. So yeah, it was really, really fun, uh, really cool experience. And, uh, he actually met me at the finish line cause he lives oh, in really? New York city. So, uh, we've become pretty good friends over the years. Uh, I'm sure you've, you know, um, you've been asked the question, uh, you know, a million times, but do you mind just kind of painting us, you know, a little bit of a picture of, of what it was like? Were you sleeping, you know, a few hours a night and then just, just running, you know, most of the day? Yeah. Day yeah. Um, <laughs> for 42 so, days. Yeah. So like, as opposed to like my little uh, Alaska to Florida run, this one was supported. So I had a team of four with me the whole way and we had an RV and then we had uh, two other vehicles, um, like a Jeep and a, a car. And basically it was, uh, uh, I would average, I think I averaged 73 miles uh, per day. Mm. And um, most mornings I would start at like 4 a.m. Um, because I, I, I wanted to get done each day before um, it got dark out. Mm-hmm. And this is September, October. So it, it gets dark kind of early. So I would start, you know, like three or four in the morning and Basically, I would, we, we, we didn't, the RV, I would sleep in it every night right alongside the road. So that saved a lot of time. Like, so we weren't like driving back and forth to the route, mm-hmm. uh, we were literally just like finding an intersection. We just got lucky that there was always one kind of where we needed it. And yeah, I mean, I had a couple guys, uh, Chuck and Dean, who were um, crewing for me like throughout the day. So like they would leapfrog it a couple miles at a time and hand me food and water. So yeah, I mean, that was like just basically it for, you know, 42 days and change <laughs> how long it took me. So, I mean, there's a, I was looking at the leaderboard, there's already a team that's like 
past the halfway point uh, in Nebraska. <laughs> so right. Yeah. Yeah. A little faster than I did. It was like 14 hours a day of running and, um, you know, getting eight hours of sleep most nights. So that was good. So, um, I wasn't really like circling the drain too much, but I actually did right. one day off completely in Nevada and the clock's still going, even if you take right. a day. Off. So that was, right. that was kind of a painful day out in the middle of nowhere too. So, yeah. Yeah, we had uh, had Michael Wardian on uh, the other day, and he he said it was his plan this year to to actually do the the coast to coast run. I, I assume it, it it would be the same one that you did, uh, but those plans were uh, averted due to the uh, due the due to the pandemic. But I'm sure there's some people that are probably eyeing that world record. Yeah, yeah, I think I you know I've heard. Uh, well, I know Mike actually. You know, we both run for Hoka, so um, I got to share a room with him um, at like a athlete get together last. Uh, December so it mm-hmm. got to know him pretty well uh, over the last year and yeah he uh, he's he you know hopefully you know as soon as this COVID stuff I don't know like when but like he's probably gonna go for you know that San Francisco New York run and then I think yeah. uh, there might be one or two other guys that is looking to do it so it's the popularity of running across or you know walking across America has gotten uh, really popular um, over the last decade or so so it's been really cool to yeah. talk a lot of people that are interested in it but you know mike is probably like the most accomplished all-around runner ever so it's fun to hear him thinking about it yeah so so you're part of team uh the loose cannons uh just i just took a peek at your uh your miles so far for the first you know nine days or so and you guys are putting in some significant miles how's uh how's the race going for you so far and the fact that it's a, a virtual race and you know you don't need a, an rv to to crew you yeah, it's a lot, a lot easier. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We like, we had like a little, I created like a little Facebook group for our team of 24. Um, and we're always like, just kind of talking about our progress each day. Uh, so then like each day, you know, I'll post like, um, like a re like a memory recap of where we are on the map. So like I'll post photos of like when I did it and like tell stories and like, uh, one of the people that uh, her name's Cinder, who uh, was on on the crew that supported me. She she's in the group as well, so she's kind of been filling in the gaps of where I can't remember something. So it's been a lot of fun to like go back through memory memory lane a little bit, and mm-hmm. and yeah, like we we have a really fun group that you know is all sorts of different backgrounds. So it's kind of fun to see like the people that are really consistent each day logging like you know an hour every single day and then there's people that will there's some that will log like 30 miles one day and then take a day off and then so it's (laughs) it's been kind of fun to like track and um you know make sure we use up as much of the 24 hours as we can each day so outside of uh outside of this event um you know are there any other events that are on your your radar either you know self-sustained or anything coming up for you uh this year yeah you know um one of these years i'd love to run across australia so like that's kind of been on my radar you know it's it's kind of difficult right now to you know tell when something like that would ever happen but yeah actually i'm supposed to run run uh this race out in death valley i do every year it's um, from the lowest point in the continental U.S. to the highest point at Mount Whitney. So it's from 300 feet below sea level to Mount Whitney, which is uh, over 14,000 feet. It's all just a continuous race. And we're, re- we're hoping that we can still do it in uh, two weeks from now. So I actually do. Yeah, I actually, it's just kind of crazy because I've just kind of been like completely out of the mode of like traveling or doing something but you know hopefully um we can go out to the middle of nowhere and run for 135 miles in a couple of weeks <laughs> that's that's in a few weeks huh yep. so is there a record currently for for what you're planning to do that that lowest point to the highest point yeah yeah it's uh the badwater 135 um i actually did hold the course record for a couple of years but then it got broken last year so maybe someday you know i'd, I'd love to, to get it back i don't know if this will be the year but uh it's uh it's a really cool experience because like it's just such a unique part of the country out there in death valley so it's i like to do it every year well thanks pete i really uh i really appreciate you joining us is is there anything um you know you want to mention or anything else you want to touch on no i mean i just like i i I think this is a really cool event and like i i would like you know maybe not we, we maybe not everyone can run across america at some point but like everyone that does this like 
just like the next time you go across country or you like cross paths like with some of these parts of the course like go check it out like I, I went through so many like small towns I would have never gone through because yeah. uh, like we take the interstate or we we fly places and like I just remember going through places like you know Dinosaur Colorado or Tonopah Nevada or Napanee Indiana and just like seeing these really cool you know off the beaten path type of places so I'd yeah recommend anytime you get a chance you'll always you'll never regret it Awesome. Uh, I really appreciate it, Pete. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. Uh, good luck. Good luck to uh, your team, the Loose Cannons, for the rest of the Great American 5000. And good luck in uh, a couple weeks with, uh, with Badwater. Thanks, Casey. I appreciate it. All right, Pete. Take care. Take care. Thanks so much, Pete, for joining me. And thank you all for watching. As always, please comment. Please subscribe to the channel so you can get all the updates on the Great American 5000. Until next time, I'm Casey Baum with Buddy. Stay fearless out there.